The Cube presents UiPath Forward 5. Brought to you by UiPath. Welcome to day two of Forward 5 UiPath's customer conference. You're watching The Cube, my name is Dave Vellante, my co-host is David Nicholson. Yesterday, Dave, we heard about the extension into an enterprise platform, we heard about, a, from the two CEOs, a new go-to-market strategy, we heard from a lot of customers how they're implementing uh, UiPath generally and automation specifically, scaling, hyper-automation, all the buzzwords are here. <laughs> Todd Foley is the CDO and CISO of Ladonia Technologies and Devika Sar Saharia is the Director of ERP and RPA at MongoDB. Folks, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for taking time out of your busy day and coming on. Thank, Thank you, you Dave. so much. So let's start with the roles. So Devika, ERP and RPA, yes. it's like peanut butter and jelly, or how do those things relate? Okay. What's, your, what's your role? Absolutely, so I started at Mongo um, as an uh, ERP manager, and um, you know, as, as we were growing, the one thing that, that came out um, of um, you know, the, the every year goals for the company, one big goal that came out was how we have to scale. There are so many barriers to scale. How can we become a billion dollar company? What do we need to do? And when we started drilling down into uh, you know, different areas, we figured it out that people do a lot of stuff manually. It's like comparing sheets, um, you know, copying data from one place to the other, and so on and so forth. So uh, one thing that we realized was we definitely need some kind of automation. At that time, we didn't know what automation, but um, we, we did our own market yeah. research and yeah. here we Let's are. Let's automate, yeah, right. <laughs> sounds easy. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, Todd, uh, CDO, uh, Chief Data or Chief Dig? And CISO, I'm assuming Chief Data. Chief Data. And, and, and the Chief Information Security Officer. Uh, tell us about Lidonia and also your role. Sure, Lidonia, we started uh, just over three years ago. Uh, we looked at the RPA market, we saw great opportunity, but we also saw a challenge. We saw that a lot of people had deployed RPA, but weren't getting the promised you know, immediate ROI, rapid deployment that was out there. And when we looked at it, we saw that it really wasn't a technical challenge. Um, sometimes it was how technology was applied, but there were a lot of things that people were doing in their process and how they were treating RPA often as if it were traditional technology that slowed them down. So we built our practice, uh, our company around the idea of being able to help people scale very quickly and drive that faster. And we're finding now, with the RPA being pretty ubiquitous, that it's the one thing that's in the greatest demand among our clients. Okay, so you're the implementation partner for, for Mongo, is that right? We are. Okay, so in relatively new, very new actually, mm -hmm. but a specialist, so why'd you choose Lydonia? So that's an interesting question. Uh, when we came last year to um, UiPath Forward, we were looking for uh, you know, the right kind of people who can, who can uh, you know, put us on track. We had uh, the technology, we had everything in place, we did the POC, everybody liked it, but we didn't know how to you know, basically uh, go in that direction. We were missing that direction, and when we, uh, you know, we were doing our homework here, we found, uh, we accidentally stumbled with Lydonia, and um, I had follow-up conversations with Todd, and uh, they were just uh, so tapered, I knew exactly what uh, Todd was explaining me, and. Uh, and we knew we are, we are in, in safe hands. So where did you start? So we, uh, the first thing that we did was a POC for the finance uh, side of um, business. And uh, right after that uh, POC, we realized that, uh, you know, how much time people were actually investing manually. Like things that were done to three to four days was turning into a 30 minute process. And um, that gave us, uh, you know, the idea that we should start drilling down into different departments and try to find where there are uh, you know, areas where we can improve. And uh, we did all of that and then we met with Todd and Todd explained that how his reignite process uh, works. So we, we took reignite as, as uh, our first step and uh, you know, took it from there. We chose one department, we worked with them. We um, had about 10 processes highlighted Thanks to Todd, he worked with them and uh, he literally uh, drilled and nailed it down that what we need to do. And uh, as of today, all those uh, 10 are automated. Mm. Wow, okay. Todd, does this interaction between uh, Lydonia and MongoDB as a customer 
apply equally in the field when you're going out and talking to clients that might be running MongoDB, they might be customers of MongoDB, they may have financial applications that are back-ended with MongoDB. Is there a synergy there that you've been able to gain? I, I think there is. I, I think there's one thing that's kind of unique about RPA and that the traditional questions around integration and applicability aren't as important when you have a platform that can work with anything that people can, can use. I think also, you know, when we look at what we typically do with people, um, some of the things we see at Mongo are very common use cases you know, across all of our clients. So I, there's definitely the ability for us to um, take things we've done and get, have clients get leverage out of them. At the same time, the platform itself is, makes it different than a traditional model where you know, if somebody has worked in a particular area or built an automation that for a particular application, there's some kind of utility to do it faster for another client. What we find is that that's not really the case and that oftentimes we'll compete with people who use different tool sets than UiPath who have that kind of value story around having done it before. Um, we come in and we do it twice as fast as they could. So you, you're a veteran of complex integrations. Oh I, yeah. I know that from our, our paths <laughs> have crossed in the past. So you're saying that in this world of RPA, that, these, that this tool set, like a UiPath as a platform, we've been talking a lot about the difference between being a tool set and being a platform. Right. That this platform can sort of hover above things without that same la layer of complexity or level of complexity that you've experienced in the past? Because that speaks to the idea that UiPath as a platform is going to work moving forward in a big way. Exactly, right? Okay. I think we've seen for years and years that regardless of the type of development environment um, you're using, a developer's value sometimes is based on what reusable libraries they've created, what they have to cut and paste from their old code to be able to do things faster. Um, the challenge with that is it has to be maintained. Um, it, when things change, they've got to update those libraries. It's a value prop that's very high touch. With UiPath, they've created the ultimate in reusability. The platform, especially since they acquired cloud elements and built all of those API integrations into their platform, the platform maintains the reusability and the, re and the libraries in such a way where they're drag and drop from a development standpoint and you don't have to maintain them. It's the ultimate expression of reusability as a platform. Yeah, cloud elements, API automation, obviously a key pickup by UiPath. Devika, uh, what's the scale of your uh, our, our operation today? Like how many bots and where do you see it going? Yes, so we, we started with one bot the uh, last year we, we experimented a lot that, uh, you know, we were just trying to make our footprint in the company, trying to understand that, you know, people understand what RPA is, what UiPath is. Initially we got a lot of pushback. We got a pushback from our security team as well because they could not understand, you know, that what UiPath is and how secure it is. And we had to explain them that how we would host it over AWS, how we will work, how we will not save passwords, et cetera. When we did all of that and they, they got comfort, we started picking you know, very small processes around to show uh, you know, people the capability of uh, RPA and UiPath, per se. When we did that, uh, people started just coming with bigger processes and uh, one specific team that I can think of came that we do uh, you know, fuzzy uh, logic in Excel and we do it twice a week, but it takes a lot of time. We automated it, they run it daily, every single day, two times now. And um, the exponential growth that we saw just with that one automation was mind boggling. I couldn't believe that, uh, you know, we, we were tracking our insights and we were like, oh my God, what happened? It just blew out of proportion. Okay, so then did you need more bots? Are you still running one bot or? Nope, now at the moment we have nine. Okay. And we are still looking to grow. Okay, so the, the, the initial friction, you, you said there was some you know, concern, it was primarily security? Or were there others, people afraid they're going to lose their jobs? Was there any there of was, that? There was no uh, risk of losing the job. The major uh, you know, pushback was, uh, one was from security, the other one was from uh, different system owners, because a lot of people were not sure why we want UI access or why we want API access, and why are we accessing their systems, what type of information we are trying to gather out of their systems, are we writing into their system? Because a lot of people have issues when we start saying that we will write 
or overwrite data. So uh, most of the processes that we are working around are either writing, comparing, and uh, reading and comparing, and if it is writing, we take special permission that this is what we are going to do. So, what did you have to do to get through the security knothole? The AWS SOC 2 report, did you have mm -hmm. to show them the, the UiPath pen test? Did Absolutely. you have to change any of your processes? What, what was that sort of punch list like? Everything. Yeah. So we, we had to start from um, pen test, we had to start, uh, we had to explain that UiPath is in the process of uh, uh, you know, acquiring SOC. Uh, we've also explained that how things are hosted on AWS. We had to uh, you know, bring uh, our consultants in who explain that how on, on AWS this will be a very secured way of doing things. And uh, when we did um, our first process, which was actually for the auditors, which is uh, you know, interesting, um, what we did was we did segregation of duties, which I think is very important uh, in every field and every sphere we work in. So for example, uh, the, the write-up that we were building for uh, auditors, we made sure that it is approved by a physical or a human, you know, and not everything is done by the bot. The biggest piece of uh, the puzzle was writing, you know, because it was taking a lot of time. People were going into different systems, gathering information, putting it on Excel, and then, uh, uh, you know, comparing and, and uh, submitting it to PwC. When you say write, you mean any update to a system of record? Correct. Required some, some scrutiny. Scrutiny, yes. Yeah, okay, initially yes. by a human until there was comfort level and then it's Correct. okay, these bots know what they're Correct. doing. And, Correct. Okay, and now you're a NetSuite customer, correct? Yes. That's your ERP? That's right. Now we were talking about Oracle is going to acquire OCR mm -hmm. capabilities. Well that, and we've been talking, Dave and I, about, all week about, okay, well ServiceNow has you know, RPA mm -hmm. and, 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 and Salesforce and, and, and SAP, et cetera. Mm -hmm. How will that affect your thinking about adopting UiPath? I don't think it should, it should matter because I think all these systems kind of coexist in, in, in a bigger ecosystem. You know, and I, I also feel that all these systems have their own plus points and minus points. Not one system in per se can do everything mm -hmm. within a company. So it could be that, for example, NetSuite might be very strong for financials. In, in the space we are in, but not extremely good around sales and marketing. So for that, company chose Salesforce. So you know you have those smaller, smaller um, multiple systems that build into a bigger ecosystem, right? And I think um, the other piece of the puzzle is that UiPath helps bridge that gap between these systems. You know, it could happen that certain things can get integrated, certain things cannot because of uh, the nature of business, the nature of work that the teams are trying to do. And I think, think UiPath is leveraging that gap, you know, and, um, right. and putting, uh, you know, those strings together. As you scale, mm -hmm. how will, and Todd, I presume you're going <clears> to <throat> assist in this process, but how will you decide what processes to prioritize? Mm -hmm. and, and is that a process? driven decision, is it, is it data led, mm -hmm. both, if so, what kind of data, can you describe how you guys could approach that? Yep, Todd, would you like to take that first before I start? Sure, <laughs> yeah, maybe some best practice and then we can maybe get specific to Mongo. Absolutely, our, our guidance is always that it should be a business decision, right, and it should be data driven based on a business defined metric around the business case for that particular automation. Our guidance to customers is, don't automate it unless you know why you're automating it and what the value is. Um, we see sometimes there are challenges with people being able to articulate the business case for an automation and it can almost always be resolved by having that business case be the first step in qualifying and identifying an automation candidate. And then how does that apply to, to Mongo? Do you, what, where are you thinking about you know, scaling? It's it's interesting because uh, you know initially we thought that we will uh, you know explore one area in MongoDB, and uh, and uh, the other thing that we did was we did road shows. So because we had to create some awareness in the company that we have UiPath. There's something called bots. There's something called you know um, automation that that we can we can do. So we created a presentation with small demos inside it, and um, you know circulated it within the company, different departments try to explain what uh, we can achieve. And based off of that, uh, you know, 
we, we came up with uh, a laundry list of uh, all the automations that different departments needed. And um, out of that, you know, we started doing uh, the business case, the value, um, you know, trying to uh, com come up with complexity, effort. We did a full estimation matrix, and based off of that, we came, okay, these are the top 20 that we should build first. And uh, as soon as we built those top 20, we saw a skyrocket, uh, you know, growth. And, um, and you're and looking for hard dollars, right? Yes, uh, yes, okay. I mean, yeah. just absolutely. To be clear. Devika, yes. I think, Mongo also is great at taking a data-driven approach to looking mm -hmm. at their program. Do you want to share how you do that? Yes, absolutely. So one thing that, that we were very sure was uh, we have to talk in terms of numbers because that's, that's the only solid way to see growth. And uh, what we did was, um, you know, we got insights, we started doing full metrics in terms of uh, dollar saved, hours saved, and uh, we are trying to track uh, how every process is impacting, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Like, say for example, for finance, are we shortening the close cycle in any shape or form by doing these two or three automations that we are doing? And uh, I'm happy to report that um, we have really shortened our, our close cycle from where we started. Your quarter end or month end close? Correct, uh, yes. Okay. Daily? Yep. You're at the daily close yet? Or <laughs> the John Chambers? <laughs> yeah, <great. laughs> Drive everyone nuts. First I have to say, I can, I can feel the audience sort of smiling as they see, as they hear from MongoDB, disruptor of legacy databases, <laughs> being cautious in their internal approach <laughs> to change as, yeah. every, as everyone else exactly. does. Yeah. But, yes. but Todd, just sort of um, double clicking on this idea of, of uh, kind of stove pipes of capabilities in the RPA space. I mean, OCR being added to, to NetSuite, not sure if that's the greatest example, but the point is Lydonia will work with all of those technologies to synthesize something, is that correct? Or are you a UiPath only? Both. So we exclusively use UiPath with our customers. We don't use other RPA platforms, okay. and we don't because not because we can't, but because we don't believe that anything else is going to be as quick or as effective. Also, it's the only platform that is as broad and comprehensive as it needs to be to deliver outcomes to our customers. We have partnerships with other companies that have gaps where UiPath isn't currently playing, but the number of companies and the number of gaps has shrunk down to almost nothing these days. Mm -hmm. And we're well placed as UiPath continues to grow their platform to take advantage of that and leverage that to deliver outcomes to customers. It was a great story of starting small, being careful, yes. um, and prudent from mm -hmm. a security standpoint, mm -hmm. especially as a public company. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then it sounds like there's a virtually unlimited opportunity. Yes, absolutely. Guys, so absolutely. Great story, thank you very much for sharing it. Thank Appreciate you. It. All right, good luck. All right, thank you for watching. Keep it right there, Dave Nicholson and Dave Vellante. We'll be back from UiPath Forward 5 from the Venetian in Las Vegas. Right back. <laughs>